Hello everybody, I have a question for you today. Say you're going 20 miles an hour for two hours. How far have you gone in total? Well, you could just multiply the two times the 20 and get a total of 40 miles. Or we could look at it in a different way. Take this graph for instance. On one axis, we have the number of hours, and on the other axis, we have the, the total miles per hour. If we were to turn this into a rectangle, it would be the same thing as finding the area of the rectangle, which is length times width. So we could do the number of hours times the total of miles per hour, like this. So here we have a square or rectangle with the number of hours along the bottom and the number of miles per hour on the side. And all I've done is put a line, a vertical line, at the number of hours. And so when you multiply the 2 on the base of the rectangle times the 20 on the height of the rectangle, you get a total of 40. What this means is that the area of the rectangle is our answer. We can also use this technique with more difficult looking curves. If we were to break this curve up into smaller rectangles, then what we could do is find the area of each individual rectangle. The width of each rectangle is 1, and the height of the rectangles are about 3.6, 2, and 1. So if you add up the area of the rectangles, which is 3.6, 2, and 1, then we get a total of the area under the curve from this point to this point being approximately 6.6 .6 units squared. The thinner the rectangles that we choose, the closer the answer is to the actual area under the graph. This is the idea behind a concept called integration, which is widely used in calculus. Now calculus was first explored by two Greeks over 2,000 years ago, Eudoxus and Archimedes. Modern calculus, however, was first used in the late 1600s by Gottfried Leibniz and Isaac Newton. The story goes that they were both racing to publish their studies first. Although Leibniz was first to publish, Isaac Newton actually accused Leibniz of plagiarism, and so there was a great controversy in the 1600s. Although nowadays, both of them are credited uh, independently coming up with the ideas used in calculus. The idea of area under a curve being equal to the total area can also be used with multiplication tables. Now, you probably know what this is. You can take any number along the base and multiply it by any number along the side, and that gives you your answer. For example, say you want to multiply 7 times 5. What you do is you go over 7 and you go up 5 and that gives you your answer of 35. You can also picture this by drawing rectangles. Say you want to find the answer to 5 times 4. Well, you can draw a rectangle that is a base of 5 and a length of 4, and you can count the number of squares. And the number of squares gives you your answer of 20. 
So why should we bother with trying to connect numbers with shapes? When kids are young, they're taught numbers and math by counting objects, one apple or two apples or three apples. But as they're taught more and more math, the connection to these objects and to reality kind of fades, which can cause a loss of interest. Connecting multiplication to rectangles, which is what they were originally created for, what multiplication was originally created for, to find the area of a rectangle, can help bring back that connection to reality for math. Thanks for watching. Bye. By Gottfried Leibniz.